Okay, so now we want to use paint effects to maybe cover something with grass. Um, so let's just quickly make a ground plane and give it some more resolution. Maybe even a little more. I'm just going to sculpt this to have a slightly different shape. Okay, and then I'm going to make a little pool in the middle. I'm just using the foamy brush. If I hold down control, it will, instead of adding, it will subtract or push in. So I'm going to use this to make a little pool later. Maybe. If I hold down shift, I can just smooth. I'm seeing that I'm doing a little bit. Or am I? Maybe I'm imagining it. Anyway, so we have a simple piece of geometry. We will delete history, freeze transformations. And now, let's just hide this for a sec. We are going to go into the content browser. And here we'll grab some grass. Grass clump, maybe. And I just want to paint one little grass clump. A uh, couple of things I'm going to change in the settings. So in the brush, under tubes, under growth, nope, under behavior. Uh, branches, oh, what am I looking for? Oh yeah, so under width scale, then the tube direction is along the normal, but you can see these things are have been adjusted. I just want this to stand up straight. Everything else is fine. And again, we're just going to convert this to modify, convert paint effects to polygons. Okay, that's good. If I hit W now, you can see that the pivot point's not right in the middle. So let's hit. So if I press D on the keyboard, I can put it in the middle at the base, hit D again, hold down X and snap this to the middle of the world. Then I'll just freeze its transformations. And if I don't want the history of this attached to the original brush, which I may want um, because of the animation, uh, I can leave history on, but I don't want to. So I'm just going to delete the history. Edit, delete by type, history, right? So I'm going to convert this. Oh, no, I did convert it to polygons, right? So now I could just use this as my mash object. I could select this and go to FX, mash, oops, got to select it. Uh, mash, create mash network, instancer, and so on, right? But I'm going to do one other step. Now, this is in a, a group node. I can just drag this out. It doesn't really need to be in a group node. Before I do that, I'm just going to uh, fix the shader again. So open the hypershade. So it comes with this grass clump shader. I think it's just a ramp. So we can just use the same ramp. Again, we'll just use an AI standard surface. And this time there's no transparency or anything. So I'm going to take the out color of this ramp into the base color. And I can even just delete this one. Actually, I just want to see. Yeah, they've got some specularity. They also have translucence. This is like old fashioned Maya stuff. Um, so we could go in and change these. I'm going to turn specular down just to avoid the problem. You could make it subsurface. Let's not worry about that right now. And we're going to make thousands and thousands of these things, and they all have to render separately, of course. So I want to be careful. So let's call this grass. So like I said, you could, is that assigned? No. There we go. Let's just double check and make sure it works. Do I have a light? No. All right. 
so that looks pretty good. So that ramp is going from the bottom to the top because the UVs are laid out. So it's going from kind of greenish, brownish, yellowish to brighter green at the tips. Now, like I said, we can just make a mesh network using that, or we can use, and I learned this from the Autodesk website, so it's not something I invented, but you can select an object like this and go to Arnold Stand-In, and we can export this object as a stand-in. Getting an error for some reason. Just leave it the defaults, export selection, and you can see I've done this already. It's a .ass file. Somebody's funny at Arnold. Okay, now we're going to hide this, and now we'll go to Arnold Stand-In. Create Stand-In. Except I forgot to open the option box. Arnold Stand-In. Create Stand-In. Select the one we just made. And it brings it in as a little bounding box. But if we render it, it's our little grass. So the good thing about this is that you can populate your scene with thousands of these things and it won't slow down your machine too, too much. So let's get this polyplane out again. And now if we select the stand-in, here the AI stand-in, we can rename it. And we can go to MASH, create MASH network. Make sure it's an instancer. Just keep it linear for now. Uh, we're going to switch the distribution type to mesh. And then our ground plane we can bring into our input mesh. Right? And we can increase this value by a lot. There are different ways we can put this on the surface. There's a world node that would allow you to make more of a landscape distribution of these. Uh, but I'm not going to look at that right now. Right? Kind of sparse little desert. So let's change that to 10,000. That's better. You can see it renders it pretty quickly, really, all things considered. And just like any other Arnold, whoops, move that off screen. Any other MASH object, we can still put in procedural nodes, like a random node. And now this, I've noticed this is a little wonky. I want to rotate it about the y-axis. Is that working? It's kind of hard to tell. No, it's not. You'd think the y-axis should be the up and down axis, but I've noticed that for some reason... It doesn't give me always an up and down axis. All of them are turning about a weird axis. It might be it freezes transformations, maybe. I don't know. Okay, that's not working for some reason. But we can vary the scale a little bit in the y axis, make some of them taller than others. Now I thought my pivot point was in the middle. It is, okay. So even though there are 10,000 of these things, it's still pretty, pretty responsive. And if I render, it's pretty good. So the scale is being varied now. If you wanted to vary their color, you could do that, but it'd have to be a mesh node, a mesh Maya, uh, a mesh mash, <laughs> um, which would probably increase the render time considerably. This that just took eight seconds at half HD. I mean, we could add a little bit of rotation randomness. So 
So if we go into our distribution node too, we can tell it to use face area, which will try and distribute more evenly. In this case, all the faces are the same size. It is filling in some of the gaps though. So that's pretty good. Kind of some emergent patterns here, which would be solved a little bit if we could rotate it a bit more. Um, we can continue, we can do other things. So if we wanted to affect the visibility, so if we wanted a bald patch, we could use it with the visibility node. Oh, I should turn this off. And in the visibility node, we could use, you know, fall off object. We could create that. So it's only visible in there, or we can invert it, make a bald space like that. So that's pretty handy. But I'm going to turn this visibility node off or not. I'm going to delete this. Oops. What did I do? Okay. Um, you can also uh, affect the visibility by painting a strength map. So if you painted white and black, um, you could use that. In fact, you can actually you can do it either as a texture, let me hide this mesh, or you can actually paint the vertices of this object. And it's kind of a strange way to approach it, but if you uh, right click and let me just <clears throat> put a new material on here, just put a, a basic Lambert on here. If we right click and we go to paint, we can paint the mesh vertex color. And so if I open up this tool, we can flood it with white, which means, let me reset my tool here, flood it with, come on, flood it with white. And then we could go in and paint it with black in these areas where we don't want it to to appear. Now, I have to admit, I don't know why this just works. Watch, it probably won't work now that I'm saying it. But so I'm not painting a texture here. I'm painting the vertex colors of the actual geometry. And once I paint some of them black, it's sort of an on or off prospect here, even though we can uh, use a smoothing brush if we wanted to kind of gray out these areas on the edge here. But it seems to me and when you do this, now this is not part of the shader. This is will not render. But um, if we turn that mesh back on, okay, it worked perfectly this time. <laughs> I'd noticed that when I painted this out, it would not grow anything in these areas. Hmm. Well, if we go into the visibility node, um, okay, so we can paint a visibility map on here. There's probably other ways to do it. I think you can do it by painting vertex colors too, but I haven't found it to work consistently for me. So um, I just put a Lambert on here, and if I right click on the object, go to paint, 3D paint, it's going to, so you have to have your project set up for this to work. And so I should save my file actually. So ground. So in Maya, uh, this works better if you have a Maya shader on here to show up on screen. So I'm just using a Lambert. And if I do 3D paint, you can say attribute to paint color it has to paint into a file node. So you have to assign a texture first, give it a better resolution than that. My IFF, let's just change that to a more common file type like a TIFF. 
Okay, so now it allows us to paint in here. So I can paint, I can flood this with white, so the flood color with white, and then I can paint black in this area here. Let's move that out of the way. I can turn on my grid so I can see sort of where I think the ground level is. I'm just holding down B to make my brush bigger. Okay. I can flood smooth this. Oh no, I can't do that here, can I? I can I can blur it. I could flood that. Maybe not. I'm just going to blur the edge so I get kind of uh, a transition between the black and the white here. Let's see how this works with our distribution. Okay, so let's save this texture. And I don't need to keep this material on here. In fact, I'm not going to. I'm going to put a new um, AI standard surface. We're just painting that. Um, in order to get a map that matches this thing. So, back to the mesh. If we turn this on, and then we go to our visibility node, strength map. So now we can add a file node, and load an image. Now, it doesn't put it where you'd expect makes a new folder named based on the uh, file name and then so there's the polyplane shape color tiff there it is load it up there you go so sometimes it doesn't figure this out properly so if we go back into our mash so that's the strength map in the visibility node sometimes it needs a map helper and that's where you would middle mouse drag the polygon plane in. And so that allows it to recognize the UVs on that object and know how to lay that texture out onto the surface. Um, I suppose we could all also use the same map to make the ones around the edge a little bit smaller since I've got that gray thing painted in there. So uh, I think this could work. If I just, in the strength map in the random node that I have affecting the scale, if I go to File and Map to the same thing. Yeah, so it changes. So we're getting a value of 1 here. Here where it's gray, I sort of doubt that this is going to be very noticeable. But if we now go into Arnold and Render, Anyway, that looks pretty good. We've got our shiny ground here because our Arnold shader has high gloss. Uh, where's my shader? Call this ground shader. So I don't want it to be shiny. And of course, we can just change this color. We can put noisy texture in here. So that's the Arnold noise. Oh no, I want to make. If you make the scale numbers smaller, the texture itself is more spread out. And I can just change these colors to a brown ish color, maybe. And a different brownish color just to break it up a little bit anyway that's how you can use paint effects convert to polygons switch their shader turn them into a Arnold stand-in import that stand-in so you get low res versions uh, distributed through your scene, and then when you render, it renders out the actual object. Hope this helps.